the first time I heard about the Underground Railroad, I wasn't exactly sure what it was. A train? Running on a secret track? It wasn't anything like that. Enslaved people walked and ran to freedom. Some made part of the long journey by horse and wagon, some by boat. There were no signs to guide them, just the North Star, above the Big Dipper, or the drinking gourd as they called it. Good people along the way gave fugitive slaves a place to rest and hide from the slave catchers who were trying to hunt them down. The Underground Railroad was actually more powerful than any train. It was a freedom movement, and it was unstoppable. Deborah Brown was one of about 30,000 fugitive slaves who made it to Canada via the Underground Railroad. She escaped with her husband Perry in the mid-1800s. Deborah Brown was a real person whose history has been pieced together through careful research. In the presentation you are about to see, Deborah Brown's manner of speech is based on the speech of former slaves as recorded in the 1930s. Here is Deborah Brown's story. Oh, the old man is a waiting for the carrying of freedom. We stole away in the black of the moon. We don't take nothing, just a hatchet and some bread in a sack. We walk till I about give out. When my legs couldn't go no more, we laid by till starlight. We knew the North Star, how it would lead us out of slave country. And me thinking all the time about my daughter Sarah left behind. At first light, we hear a commotion of men and dogs on the dirt track just by the river. There was a one-way slave trying to hide herself in the rushes. It made my heart heavy and hard. Heavy for that slave man being took back from freedom. And hard, cause I swore I ain't ever gonna be catched again. So then my legs got strong and never got weak no more till we come to freedom in Canada. A slave no more. Fix me for my journey home. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me. Now you listen to me. I'm an old woman now. And all what I'm going to tell you happened a long time ago. But it happened. Just the same. The first thing you got to know is, I was born a slave. I was owned by a man way down Maryland in the States. Hm. He owned me and he owned my husband, Perry Brown. He beat us if we don't work as hard as he likes. So we run away when we hear the master say he be selling my husband, Perry, away from me. We took our passage for Canada on the Underground Railroad. The stations, they called them, was mostly houses or barns where it was safe to lay low for a night or two. There was conductors to help folks move up the line going north. There were secret words and songs and all such to throw off the slave catchers. Harriet Tubman was one of the greatest conductors of the Underground Railroad. She had escaped from slavery in Maryland to find freedom in the northern states. She later moved on to greater security in Canada, but she couldn't forget those who were left behind. She set up a base in St. Catharines, Ontario, and began returning to the United States to help other enslaved people make their way to freedom in Canada. She risked her life over and over again in order to help others. We call her the Moses of our people. 
because she brought so many out of bondage. Quakers and free colored folks and all such hide us and feed us going north till we got to Detroit. I don't feel safe even in a free state. And Perry say, not to worry, we ain't go stop till we was in Canada, where colored people was free everywhere on account of a law made by them British just in 1833 that say all they slaves will be free now. An Indian man took us across the river to Sandwich, and we was out of the States forever. Colored folks wasn't always slaves. When I was a little girl, I heard my mama's mama always talking about the beautiful place in Africa she come from before she was stole off and sold away. She knew all kind of stories about her people and how they was kings and queens and had their own cities and everything like that. That was before them slave speculators come and take it all away. Some people think that we never had slavery in Canada, but that's not true. Slavery began in the early 1600s Enslaved people protested in many ways, but it would take close to 200 years for change to come about. In 1793, Chloe Cooley was an enslaved woman in the Niagara region. The man who owned her decided to sell her in the United States. Despite her violent resistance and screams, he tied her with a rope and transported her across the border. <laughs> Poor woman. That made some old British governor in Upper Canada so mad. He say, we can't let that happen no more. Witnesses reported the matter to Lieutenant Governor John Grave Simcoe. Simcoe was committed to ending slavery in the colony, but sadly, it took the Chloe Cooley incident to gain the legislative support needed to pass a bill that would gradually bring an end to slavery in Upper Canada. All black people escaping slavery in the United States would be free as soon as they arrived in Canada. And though the bill didn't free existing slaves in Canada, it did promise freedom to their children. There were strong communities all across Canada. There were black people living in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Quebec. And there were those who made their way to Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Some even sailed from California to British Columbia and settled in Victoria and on South Spring Island. However, most former slaves made their home in Ontario. Perry keep us on the long road to Toronto cause it was far from the border and slave catchers. It was against the law of Canada to carry off a runaway slave. But still, sometimes them slave catchers would come right into Canada. So we put the devil behind us and come all the way to York Township West, close by where Bathurst Street crossed over Bloor Street. Harry, he work at whatever job he could catch with the colored men that own their own businesses. Perry chopped wood for Mr. Hubbard's bakery. That's before Mr. Hubbard invented his special oven and got rich and went into politics. Now, I didn't have no trade except washing and ironing. So that's what I've done. Former slaves and free African Americans brought a wide variety of skills with them to Canada. It was slave labor, after all, that built the American South. 
From Halifax to Victoria, people made important contributions to their communities. As blacksmiths, carpenters, masons, and grocers, there were ministers, teachers, and business owners. Toronto's first taxi service was a horse-drawn cab, owned by former slaves Thornton and Lucy Blackburn. There were distinguished doctors, including Alexander T. Augusta, who practiced at the Toronto Hospital and owned and operated a successful pharmacy. Like so many other prominent African Canadians, he volunteered his time to help others. Dr. Augusta was a mentor to Dr. Anderson Ruffin Abbott, the first Canadian-born black doctor to graduate from King's College Medical School. And of course, there were the newspaper men and women whose publishings were of great importance to all African Canadians, even to those who couldn't read. I can't read on account of having no schooling when I was a slave. But I love to listen to folks read our newspapers. We had two colored papers, The Voice of the Fugitive, printed by Mr. Henry Bibb with his wife, Mary Bibb, and her a teacher and all. The other paper, The Provincial Freeman, was put out by Miss Mary Ann Shad. I felt proud when I learned that Mary Ann Shad was one of the first women publishers of any newspaper in Canada. I felt even more proud when I learned that she was my great, 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 great aunt. Just about the time we come to Canada, down in the States, they make a new law for catching runaway slaves. Now, it don't make no difference even if you got clean way to a free state. Every person, Northern and Southern, was to raise his hand up against you and help catch you and run you South a slave again. All good citizens are hereby commanded to aid and assist in the prompt execution of this law to take and remove such fugitive person back to the state or territory from whence he or she may have escaped. Even free-born colored folks in the North was catched and made slaves who had never been slaves before. The Underground Railroad never had so many passengers. There was lots of runway slaves now in Toronto. There was mostly men, young men, cause it was hard for old people and women with children to run away. But there was one woman Mrs. Anne Maria Jackson, who come herself with her own seven children, cause her master sold away two of her other children. That made me feel low in my heart, cause she brought so many, and I couldn't bring my one Sarah. A lot of people was angry, colored and white, about that slave law. There was the abolitionists and they wanted to abolish slavery everywhere in the States. Now all over Toronto, in the churches and halls, there was meetings by the Anti-Slavery Society of Canada. The preachers preached and the great men rolled out their speeches. The largest and most enthusiastic meeting we have ever seen in Toronto was held in the City Hall last night. The meeting was called to enable citizens of Toronto to enter their protest against the manifold and unspeakable iniquities of slavery. Colored men came from the States and Canada to talk about how to abolish slavery and how to settle fugitive slaves. They met at the St. Lawrence Hall. And Mr. Henry Bibb, he who was once a runway slave himself, gave a powerful oration. We have all one common interest at stake, which is the abolition of slavery 
and the improvement of our people. Let us be united in sentiment and in action upon our work until it is accomplished. We thought we were safe in Canada until Mr. John Anderson got arrested. In self-defense, John Anderson had killed a slave owner who tried to apprehend him during his escape to Canada. The states wanted John Anderson back for breaking their laws. If Canada decided to return him to the United States, he would be hanged. If he could be sent back, there wasn't a colored person safe in Canada because we all broke the laws even just by running away. Perry went down to Osgoode Hall with most of the colored men in the city. Perry say they was just all quiet when the judge said to send John Anderson back to the States. For months, former slaves in Toronto lived in fear of being sent back to the United States. But the abolitionists made themselves heard throughout Canada and in London. The Privy Council overturned the Canadian judge's decision. And soon after, another court in Canada agreed with the Privy Council and released Anderson. Both wanted to lay claim to helping John Anderson and others continue to live in freedom. They said John Anderson was fighting for his freedom, and that was no crime. He could stay in Canada. The slave states went to war with the free states, and they called it the American Civil War. A lot of young colored men in Canada wanted to go back and join the Union Army. Dr. Anderson Abbott, he goes back to be a surgeon in the Union Army, and they make him a full captain and everything. Well, they two sides fight and kill something terrible. But then the most blessed thing happened. On the first day of January, A.D. 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. Free at last. Free at last. Great God, we be free at last. And my daughter, Sarah, free to come and join us. And she don't have to come on the Underground Railroad because once all them colored folks was free, there was no need to go sneaking around, hiding from slave catchers. My Sarah come to Toronto as a free woman, sitting right up there on a proper steam train. Deborah and Perry Brown bought their home on Markham Street a year before Perry died in 1871. Deborah remained in Toronto where she was finally reunited with her daughter Sarah and introduced to her granddaughter Amelia. Deborah Brown died in 1898. They say she lived to be 111 years old. That would mean she lived in freedom for almost as many years as she was enslaved. me I see strong free colored folk and I know we gonna be here for a long time coming
Kingdom. Kingdom.